opportunity for me to witness and uh, to carry out the great commission uh, that, uh, that God has, has called me to do and called us not just me to do, but all of us to do. And I hope you've taken advantage of it. Andy Stanley was preaching a message on the radio this morning as we were coming to church and uh, he was talking about the boldness of believers and how that we need to be bold in our faith. You know, and I, I heard on the Christian radio this week on K-Love that, uh, that, you know, the, the ball teams are, are now uh, merging in into, and experiencing uh, faith days where the, the players and the teams will, will get together and they'll share their, share their faith with, uh, with, uh, with fans. And I, I think that's most awesome. Uh, it's been happening for years and it's getting greater and greater. And as I see the day of the Lord approaching, I see, I see more and more groups rising up in the boldness of people getting greater toward the Lord. And, and I, I, think, I really think that's going to happen. I really think that the church has got to rise up and be the witness that it's supposed to be. Amen. And be the witness of the power and glory of God in our lives of what He's doing and what He can do. And the ways that He makes when we see that there is no way. The past two, two to three years, I believe the Lord's been preparing me for such an occasion as this. And, and I believe every day is a preparation in our lives that the Lord's preparing us for the next day and the next day and the next day. Because who who who'd have said that uh, when I first started in the trucking business back in, I think it was 1992, that things would have gotten to the place that they did the past two or three years and that uh, last year would be such a terrible year for the business. And, uh, you know, but, but through time, God had prepared me for that and prepared me spiritually. That's what we need to be prepared for, is to be prepared spiritually to face the things that are going to come because they're going to come. The Bible says so. The Bible teaches that we're going to go through it as well so that we'll be a witness to His glory and His honor in the situations that we're in. That's right. And, you know, God has, has not ceased to amaze me yet at what He's doing and what He's done and what He's going to do. But, you know, then, there, then there's groups like the Doomsday Group. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I think about that, and and, uh, and I hope this gets put on YouTube, and I hope some of them find it. I really hate it for them. I really do. Because Satan is good at what he does. Amen. He started in the very beginning in the garden. <laughs> he started in the garden, and he started deceiving Eve then, and lying to her. He used the truth, but he, did, he, did lied, to, he lied to her and told her that that uh, if she partake, if she disobeyed God, and this is basically what it comes to, if she would disobey God and partake of that fruit that He told them not to partake of, that she would not surely die. She disobeyed God and believed this nut. Amen? Amen. This character whom we know as Lucifer, Satan, fallen praise, fallen main praise angel. You know, I think I think that something's ironic about that. I, I think he, he he took away from his time of, of main praising and praising God, and, and got the big head and got pride in his life, and, and said, "I'm going to exalt my throne above the Most High." That's in his word. Uh, you know, Satan, uh, Lucifer had a throne before his fallen state. He had a throne. He said, "I'm going to exalt my throne above the Most High." He was the third ranking being in heaven. And he is not Jesus Christ as equal either. Amen. Amen. Some people want to put him on equal status as, as Jesus, as Jesus' brother. And, and no, it's just not so. Jesus is the only begotten. And he's the one that's coming away. He's the one paid the price for our sin that we got ourselves into. And he's the one paid the debt that we owed for that. Amen. But he, he hasn't stopped lying. And if we'll be gullible, we'll get sucked into his lies as well. Amen. And these people, they, 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 got, they got away from God's Word. They got away from the vision of Christ. They got away from what His Word says, and they got sucked into it. And now they've, they've lost their jobs. These people, they quit their jobs. They sold their possessions. And I don't know what they did with the money. I really don't. Amen? Because, you know, if Doomsday is going to happen, what's the need of all the money? Why sell it? Just, just abandon it, you know? I don't know, but they got sucked into something and they've lost. I'm sure they've got an explanation for it now, and I can't I just can't wait for wait for that to come out, you know, because even the Jehovah Witnesses have a have a, 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 a an excuse for when the rapture takes place and all the church is gone, 
why, why, why is all the missing people? And, and they, have, they have a reason for that already. And, and that's, uh, that's, God, uh, that's God deliberating the earth from all the evil. Which we're referred to by the name. But anyway, neither here nor there. But Satan has come in. And he's been allowed to steal from them. They allowed it. Uh, that's why I like to sport the shirts and the bumper stickers that says Satan sucks because he truly does. And when somebody acknowledges it, it gives me the opportunity to come in and just shout that Jesus Christ is the breath of life and Satan sucks. Turn to St. John chapter 10, verse 10. In the same passage this morning. <coughs> we, we, we really need to be thoughtful about what we're doing and about our faith. We really need to be thoughtful about it 24-7. But we get so caught up in the routines of life that... that <coughs> That we neglect it. And when we neglect it, we're going to become weak. When we become weak, we become vulnerable. We become vulnerable for our for the enemy that wants to come in. in St. John chapter 10, it speaks of uh, it speaks of what I what I well uh, of, of what I think this morning. <laughs> in verse 7, it starts talking about the parable of a good shepherd. Uh, and, and it starts at, at the beginning of chapter 10, but I'm not going to get into all that, but it explains it in seven, in, in starting of 7, and I want to uh, look at verses 9 and 10 real strong. But he says, Then said Jesus unto them again in verse 7 of chapter 10 of St. John, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. In other words, uh, the doorway, he, he spoke this parable, and he said, The sheep come into the, the sheepfold, but they come in through the door. And that's the only way they can get into it. It's a guarded area. It's a protected area. And uh, these sheep come in for safety at night. And uh, he says here, he says, he says unto them, I am the door of the sheep. And it says, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. He said that there will be people to come before him. And uh, they'll, they'll claim to be Christ. And, uh, you know, we're, we're told in Matthew that if we hear that Christ is over here or over there, for us not to go because He's not there. The next appointment that we're going to have with the Lord according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is we're going to meet Him in the air. Amen. He's not going to come and be planted here on this earth. You know, He's got us to represent Him while we're here. Amen? Amen. While we're here, He said, tarry till He came. And we're here to tarry and to be the light of the world and be the salt of the world according to Matthew you know, according to, 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 to the, the salt and to the light, we're to be the salt and light of the world, and, uh, and we're to represent Him, and we're to do His job, we're His representative, we're His ambassadors here until He comes to get us. And if we're going to be a Christian, we're going to walk into faith, that's what we need to be. And we need to be encouraged in that to do that. And He says here, He says, I am the door of the sheep. He says, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Why didn't they not hear Him? Because they did not recognize Him. I believe that we as Christians, we need to follow the Lord. We need to read His Word. We need to study it. And if you haven't, shame on you. You need to. You need to pick this book up daily. The Satan the Satan is out there to come to steal, kill, and to destroy. He'll give you every reason not to. He'll give you every reason not to turn on Christian radio. He'll give you every reason in the world you know, that, that there is out there to keep you from getting what you need in life. You need spiritual strength to get you through the, the tough times of this world that we're living in. Amen. And you're not going to make it any other way. Amen. I'm not going to make it any other way. There's times that I screw up and then I mess up because I get my focus off the Lord. I'm like Peter outside the boat walking to the Lord and I get to looking at the wind and the waves around me and I lost sight of my Lord who I'm walking to and I begin to sink and I have to say, Lord, help me. Just like Amen. Peter did. But I, I thought about this group and I thought about how the Satan had come in and stolen from them. He stole their time. Man, they've been putting some time in there. I've been seeing these, I've been seeing these guys walk the streets with billboards on their back. I've seen money spending billboards on the side of the interstate. Amen? James Day, May 21st. Didn't see the time, didn't know the time until this week, and it was six o'clock. Man, it was just broadcasting everywhere. And I got to thinking, well, is that Eastern, Pacific, or Mountain? <laughs> You know, which time did I look for? You know, but in the back of my mind, I was remembering what the scripture said. I've had a chance to talk with people this week, and I said, You know, I said, Six o'clock tomorrow evening, or six o'clock this evening, I was at the asphalt plant Saturday morning, and I had, I had my pulpit right there, and I had about eight or nine in the congregation. 
And, uh, you know, I had about 12 minutes of nothing but solid, you know, just being able to preach to the guys. They brought it up. I jumped in, of course. You know, I never, I never come uninvited. But they opened it up and, and, and one would say this, and I said, well, the Scripture says this. And then another one would say, well, you know, not even the Lord knows. And you know, I said, yeah, the Scripture says this. And, and you know, I was able to give them what they needed. They need the Scripture. They need to know. And I said, you know, I said, this evening at 6 o'clock, I said, there's going to be the most soberest heathens that there ever was upon the face of the earth. Because they're thinking, well, hey, I don't need to be drunk when the Lord comes. <laughs> yeah, just in my mind. Yeah, just something to throw out there because right. I know some of them like the alcohol a little bit. Amen? And, uh, you know, not that, not that man, that's going to keep them out of heaven or whatever, but, you know, I, I just wanted to throw that in. Got a bunch of laughs on from them anyway, amen. Got in their little world they were in. But, you know, I got a chance to, to get to the real message, you know. I said, you know, I said, whether it's today or not, I said, this is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable year of Lord. Now is the time for every man to be ready, whether it's 6 o'clock today or two years from now, or 200 years from now. I said, today is the day of salvation. And, uh, and, he, and, and one of them agreed with me, and he spoke up and said to him, you know, it, it just, just was a good time. But I've had fun with this thing. But you know, it's not fun for the guys that have predicted this, that this morning that they're doing some damage control. I don't know what they're doing. I can only imagine. But you know, they've been lied to. And my prayers are for them. You know, they, they definitely believe that the Lord's coming after them. You know, they sold their possessions. Yep. How crazy a thing would we do to stand for our faith? We might look at them and poke fun at them. Man, these are nuts and fruits over here, you know. They must be from California or something. You know? But what are we going to do that's crazy to show that our faith? I mean, you can convict them of being Jesus followers. You can. Because they, they quit their jobs. They sold their possessions. You know? It may have been the devil that robbed them of it, but nonetheless, they felt so strongly about him coming and about him coming to rescue us and to get us that they gave it all up. I, I'm just saying, you know, we think they're a little off. I think they're a little off because, you know, they're not learned in the scripture because it says we don't know the day nor the hour. We do know the season it teaches. I got to preach that yesterday morning. You know, that, that scripture of preaching, I preached it. Amen? You know, you can't tell the day nor the hour that a baby's going to be born, but you know when it's about to happen. Amen? Amen. You mothers can speak of that. It may be the midnight hour, it might be the day or the marble, but you know, you know the season that it's going to happen. Amen? Ain't no doctor been able to pinpoint the time unless it has to be a C-section and you know what time it's going to be born then. Amen? <laughs> Rachel was one of the babies. Benjamin, he was Tried for three days and finally took him out. He didn't want to come. He was a Waco baby. We ain't coming out. <laughs> anyway, it says here, all that ever came before him were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear. We, we need to know the Lord's voice. The only way we're going to know His voice is to get in this Word, learn it, hide it in our heart like David said, that I might not sin against Him. And put it in our heart and think on these things. Amen? Amen. Think on the things that are good, just, holy, and pure, and lovely, and of good report. Think on the things of the Spirit of God. <clears throat> so that we might not fall into the trap of the devil Amen. to waste time, to make predictions that aren't going to happen, to bring a bad name on God. Truly what they've done is, is brought a bad name on the body of Christ. I still consider them a part of the body of Christ. Amen? The devil working. They, they just, you know, but the devil's come in and in verse 9 it says, he says, I am the door. Jesus Christ said, I, I'm, I'm it. I'm the what? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he says here, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. He said, if I'm, I'm going to be in the door of the sheep, which we are, amen. amen. He refers to us in the word as, as we're the sheep. He says, if any man come in, he shall be saved. He shall be protected. Amen. And if we've come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, there we are. Amen. We've recognized Him as the, the need for the payment for our, for our sin. For the wages of sin is death. You know, for the fall. You know, he, he came and He gave His life for it. He was the supreme sacrifice without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Oh, He was the perfect sacrifice. Gave it up for us. Laid His life down, He says. 
no man took it. He laid it down. And he took it up again. Amen? After three days. He says, I am the door. Of, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. He says here in verse 10, Though the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen? The devil, as the roaring lions, and according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-14 through 14 is what i got to wrote here. I don't know if we'll get to go to that or not, but write it down. Read it this week. Amen? It says, The devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. Seeketh whom he may devour. This group, I don't know how many is in the group. I don't know how many strong they are. They got sucked into a vision. A vision that truly, you know, they backed it up by Scripture, but man, you know, they, they had all kinds of things going on. And I hope, and I hope they don't stop following Christ because He didn't come. Amen? And I hope they get the right vision of Christ. I hope they get their minds focused because right there, they're, they're in the state of Peter. They have, they have fallen. Amen? They're, they're, they're sinking in the, in, the, in the sea of life and they need the Lord to save them. Amen? Not to save them as far as salvation goes. I would think some of them probably are saved. Some of them may not be. But it says here, it says, the thief has, it cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He's come to take you out. Amen? He's come to take the body of Christ out. He's come to do it harm. And you know, these guys, they were bold about what they were doing. But, but us, you know, what if we allow to, to come into our lives and, and take our relationship away from Him? Uh, entertainment's a, an awesome one, amen? You know, entertainment, there's nothing bad with entertainment. There's something bad with it when it, when it comes in and it steals from you. You know, and Satan used the, the pretty things of life. He used some pretty fruit on the tree, you know, and, in the very beginning and, and lied to Eve. And well, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. and This is okay. And yet, he sucked the life slam out of her. Amen. She surely died that day. She died spiritually. And she began to die physically. There was no end of time back then. Amen? There was nothing to cause death. You know, the garden was pure and perfect. But yet he came and he convinced her that he was right and that God was wrong. He'll use so many things to steal us from the relationship that we can have with Jesus Christ. He can use your busy schedule. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, yeah, you got stuff to do. You got stuff that you choose to do. Amen. Amen. Well, I got to do this. <laughs> I, I, I just challenge you. Take your schedule that you think you have and, and, and just see everything that you feel like you've got to do. Why do you have to do it? That's what I want you to look at. Just why do you have to do it? Why do you have to do it? Anyway, that's all I'm going to say on that. Sometimes we allow busy schedules to take us away. Amen. We allow busy schedules to get in, mm-hmm. get in between our relationships, not only with the Lord, right. but with each other. That's right. You know, I, I wrote in my wife's Mother's Day card that I bought Mother's Day evening. <laughs> well, I dropped the ball there. You know, and I apologize for her for allowing things to get in between mine and her relationship. And that how that sometimes it, it, it just seems like she comes second and she's not. Amen. I didn't know how I was going to get that in my message, but I didn't know it was going to come this morning. I was going to plan on last week. But, uh, but you know, I, I'm before you and I dropped the ball. Amen. And we allow Satan to come in and we allow him to steal. We, we allow him to come in and interrupt the important things in life. Amen. First of all, with our relationship with the Lord and relationship with each other. Man, the things that we harbor up as feelings in our heart and mind keep us from having a relationship with the Lord because we've got bitterness toward one another. Yeah. Unforgiveness in our hearts does nothing but cause pain. Some of our pains are caused by unforgiveness, amen? Yeah. You know, they just are. We've got to forgive one another. Yeah. We're going to be in heaven with each other, amen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, your worst enemy, well, I don't know about your worst enemy. If he knows Jesus Christ, he's going to be there, amen? Your worst annoyance, you know, if, he's, if, he, if he or she knows Jesus Christ, they're going to be there. Right. Get prepared for it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Just love them. Just love them in the Lord. You know, some, some of us, you know, we just, we just kind of like insulation sometimes. We just, 
cause discomfort sometimes. I know you can't believe that, but I know sometimes I do, ain't that? And uh, you know, I want to, I want to blend and not offend. That's what, that's what one of the lines Brother Burton used to say. And it, it's easier to come in there with a message when you blend than when you come in there offending. Amen. Amen? You can, you can get a message in sometimes if you're well, out there working in the jobs that we work in. Amen? And I don't go around with a list of requirements that I have for people that are going to be around me. Well, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to allow you to cuss around me, and especially take God's name in vain, and, and yada, yada, yada. I, I don't have all that, you know. I'm in the world, I'm not of it, and I'm separated from it. Amen? Amen. And, and I want to be out there where I can reach the heathen. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I can't tell you that all those guys were saved yesterday morning, but they had the they had the they had the means of it before we separated. And uh, of course, the plant uh, uh, plant didn't start up on time, and they didn't call for asphalt on time, and we just had that amount of time. Ain't that just something? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I think some things are just God ordained. Amen. Yeah, the company gets blamed for not having it together, but that's okay. Amen. I believe in a higher power. But Satan's come to steal, kill, and to destroy. In Luke chapter 21, verses 8 through 29, we're not going to go there. It, it deals with not being deceived. We as his children, you can write that down and read it too. Amen. I give you a lot of stuff that you can write down and read this week and study a little bit. You know, the devil's coming as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you, he wants to take you out, he wants to cause you to be unfruitful for him and the body of Christ. Luke chapter 21 is deal with being deceived. Amen? He's good at what he does. He, he, can, he, he can, hey man, he, he, can probably, he can probably sell ice cubes to a Jew. Amen? He's good at what he does. I always accused the Jews of being able to sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Amen? You know? And I did get that a little bit wrong there. But anyway, the devil's good at what he does. He can convince you that whatever, whatever separates you from God is good. And it's not always good, amen. Entertainment, I, man, I, I'm all for entertainment, you know. But the movie industry, you know, I, I need, I need to hush on all that because I know I hurt some people's feelings in here about entertainment. You know, the devil's got so much out there, whether it's entertainment, whether it's whether it's work, jobs, you know, that can steal us in our, steal from our relationship with him. You know, that's what you need to guard against. You need to examine your own life and see, see where you're at with the Lord. See if a storm's coming to hit your life. Are you going to be able to stand it? Are you going to be sucked into some lie? And these guys here, they got sucked in and Satan stole from them. The last part of verse 10 there says, it says, He's come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. That's a promise to His people. That's what Jesus yeah. said. That's what Jesus made. St. John 10 and 10. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He says, I've come to give you a breath of fresh air. Amen. He has come. He is the breath of life, the Word of God says. And when somebody acknowledges my shirt that has Satan sucks on it or my truck or whatever, my stickers that I put on everything I drive, you know, Jesus Christ is a breath of life. Yes, he is. But Satan will try to suck that life right out of you. Yeah. And I pray for my friends this morning. I call them my friends because, you know, they, they've tried to get to heaven too. They just thought they was going to be there, you know, 6 o'clock yesterday. But I pray for them. I pray for them that they'll recover. I pray for them that they'll come back from them, that they won't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. I pray for them that they won't be deceived again. I pray for them that they'll come back and that they'll be strong for the Lord. And that they'll get in His Word and they'll study it. Right. He goes on to say here, he says, he says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth His life for a sheep. Jesus Christ laid His life down for us so that we could have life. He gave life for life. Amen? Amen. He gave up His life. He suffered death for our death. The wages, according to Romans, of our sin. The wages of our sin is death. It's a debt that we owe. But Jesus Christ paid it. Amen. Thank you. St. John 21, verse 22. He tells us to do something here. There's a lot of scripture in Matthew 24 and 25 that I wanted to look at. Some dealing with now, some dealing with the time that Christ is to come. And, uh, we know i got that much time this morning. St. John 21. About verse 22. 
<clears throat> John is writing about Peter here. <clears throat> Peter was uh, <laughs> Peter was concerned here about what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. We've got two more scriptures we're going to go to. This one here and one in Acts chapter 1. In verse 20 of St. John chapter 21, it says, Then Peter turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved. And he's talking about John here. Following. He says, Which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? And Peter seeing... Uh, him saith to Jesus, uh, let me read that again. It says, then, then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? And Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? I, I, I'm here, who, who denied Jesus? Was it, was it, was, no, he betrayed him. But who denied him? It was Peter that, bet, that, uh, that betrayed him a little bit. And, and I hadn't realized this until reading this. But it says, Then Peter turning about, sent the disciple whom Jesus loved. And that was John. It was John the one that put his head on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Uh, Peter denied him. It was Judas that betrayed him. Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? So, so you got Peter who denied it, but you got Peter uh, questioning what's John's job here. You know, he's the one that was asking you who's going to betray you, and, and that was Judas. You know, and, and what's what's John's job to do? I don't know how many of us have ever sat back and said, Well, you know, I wonder what I wonder what John's job is. You know, well they're working at food ladder. I think he ought to be doing something. <coughs> You know, Tim. I, I, Tim. You know, God. What's Tim supposed to be doing? You know, he just butt my nose into everybody's business. Amen. I, I'm I'm just a junior shepherd here, and I'm do my best to shepherd you. Amen. Teach you, but uh, but it ain't it ain't my business to come in. Well, let's see what the Lord said. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and and what shall this man do? I like what Jesus said here. I like his comeback. <laughs> Jesus saith unto him. If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Is it really, Peter, any of your business? Amen? That's basically what he said. He said, if I will that he tarry till I come. In other words, I can go and I can come again. You know, what business is it of thee? You know, what is it to thee? Follow thou me, is what Jesus told Peter. Follow thou me. Amen. Tarry till he comes. And that's his answer to each and every one of us. You know, we're so busy and caught up sometimes in what we think others ought to be doing that, that we're just lacking in doing what we're supposed to be doing. He said, follow me till he comes. Amen. Isn't that kind of the great commission? I know what God's called us to do, you know. You know, these guys, these guys here yesterday, you know, they were looking for him to come at six. I don't know what time central, you know, mountain, Pacific, Eastern, you know. It was Eastern. When, when we missed it, it was Eastern time, okay. I didn't know. When I missed it, I said, well, there's always mountain. Yeah. Amen. There's always central. And there's always Pacific. And then there's the other, other times across the world, amen. But anyway, it didn't come. But Jesus said, follow thou me. Amen. Follow thou me. That's important. Amen. And he goes on to say, it says, it says, then went this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciple, that this disciple should not die. They didn't make, they didn't make a teaching. They didn't make, uh, made here a, 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 a teaching. Uh, yet Jesus saith unto him, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? He, he even said it twice. Amen. Amen. You know. And they, they made a doctrine out of it. And they said, well, you know, Jesus is going to come back before John dies. That didn't happen. Amen. See, they were, they were setting the time there as well. Amen. Right. 
They were setting a the time there. And we're warned in Scripture not to set times. And I had Scripture for all that to go to and, and everything this morning as well. Uh, Matthew 24 is where it says, uh, you know, here's Christ and there's Christ. And it says, when you see that, you say, don't, don't bother about going. Right. You know, we're going to meet Him in the air. Amen. You know? But what is it that is so important that the Lord wants us to do? He just wants us to follow Him. Amen. Right. Follow Him and encourage others. Hey, the Lord is coming. When's He coming? I don't know. You know? I know the times are getting about right. Amen. I know the season, you know, and Jesus used a fig tree on one occasion. He used he used a pregnant mother on another occasion to say, Hey, you don't know what day or hour that baby's gonna be born, but it's gonna be born and she the you know, mother's gonna travail and she's gonna have that young one. Amen. Yeah. That young will come. That's a fact. Once it's in there, it's it, it's coming. Amen. Yeah. You let nature take its course and, and go through the everything and it's gonna happen. We don't know the day and the hour. Now the, now the doctors predict. And I love them. They predict. Oh, that's it. We're going to set the date at uh, December, what? December 23rd, maybe? Whatever. What was the date for him? Yeah, yeah somewhere about there. An 80% girl. An 80% girl. Man, I just I just loved it when he was born. Amen. Definitely wasn't no girl. And it was the 13th of January, which was on a Friday. Amen. Did I have fun with that doctor? Amen. They're only guess. Didn't know the day nor the hour. We know the season. Hey, you know, hey, she's gonna be ready. She's gonna be ready to spit him out about December, man, last of December, amen. Day nor the hour is not important. Jesus said, You see the fig tree, you see it blooming. He said, You see it turning green. He said, You know the fruit's on the way. What day it's gonna give fruits, you don't know. What time it's gonna be ready, you don't know. Amen. amen. 